Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about aortic regurgitation, focusing on the signs and symptoms. So to start off with the symptoms. Patients with long-standing chronic regurgitation are actually asymptomatic for many years before they develop symptoms of left ventricular failure, then being dyspnea, orthopnea and fatigue. In an examination of these patients, there are many signs to, to find. So starting with the collapsing pulse, so this is when if you were to feel their right radial, radial pulse and then lift the radial pulse above the level of their heart, you'll feel a rapid upstroke and descent in the character of the pulse. They will have a widened pulse pressure, so a large difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure. This is because as blood regurges back into the left ventricle through the aortic valve, there's a situation of overload within the left ventricle. This causes a, an increased stroke volume. And is this, it is this increased stroke volume that causes the widened pulse pressure. The overload also causes uh, the laterally displaced apex beat. Um, because of the overload, there's dilatation hypertrophy of the ventricle. As it hypertrophy and dilates, um, you'll feel that the apex becomes more lateral and you'll feel it thrusting in nature. The murmur to remember in aortic, sorry, aortic regurgitation is the early diastolic murmur. It's heard best at the left sternal edge, fourth intercostal space, and loudest with the patient sitting forward with a breath held in expiration. The way to remember this murmur is by thinking about it. So any murmur you hear is just the flow of blood across the valve. So in aortic regurgitation, the blood is flowing back across the aortic valve as soon as the ventricle has stopped contracting and exerting its pressure. So the blood flows back as soon as systole is finished. So this is in early diastole. You may also hear a mid-systolic murmur. Um, as I've already mentioned, there's an increased stroke volume, and so there's a turbulent flow across the aortic valve during ventricular contraction. So this may be why this is why you may hear the mid-systolic murmur. A few other things to be aware of that they may just put in some of your exam questions. So firstly, Corrigan sign, which is whereby you see carotid pulsation. De Musset's sign, where there's head nodding with each heartbeat. Quinky's sign, where there's capillary pulsations in the nail bed. Traub's sign, a pistol shot sound over the femoral arteries. Um, and then there's the Austin Flint murmur, which is a mid-diastolic murmur over the cardiac apex. This is thought to be because of the aortic jet impinging on the mitral valve, causing almost a picture of mitral stenosis. And then finally, there's De Rosier's sign. Uh, which at the groin, compressing the femoral artery with a finger two centimetres proximal to the stethoscope will give a systolic murmur. If it is two centimetres distal, you will hear a diastolic murmur as the, flood, as the blood flows backwards. Um, so that's the aortic regurgitation, the signs and symptoms to be aware of. So uh, just to quickly recap the symptoms. So patients with chronic regurgitation are asymptomatic for many years before they develop their symptoms of left ventricular failure such as dyspnea or fopnea or fatigue. The signs to look out for a collapsing pulse, a widened pulse pressure, the laterally displaced apex beat that is thrusting. Um, the murmur to remember for it is the early diastolic murmur. Thank you. I hope that was helpful.